Hello everyone, I've received a lot of requests in the last few weeks to cover Tailwind version 4, or more specifically, how to integrate this new version of Tailwind into your WordPress projects. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I would integrate it into both a custom block type and a theme. Let's jump into the action. So I have my own boilerplate that I maintain. I just updated this last week for Tailwind v4, and in the description for this video, you'll be able to find my github.com link here. Uh, but from this repo, there's different folders, right? There's block types, there's themes, there's interactivity API examples, so on and so forth. But the first thing I want to, or the first example I want to walk through with you is just a custom block type plugin that uses Tailwind. So you can clone the repo or just download a zip. But in particular, I'm interested in this folder called Brad's Boilerplate Block Plugin Tailwind. And I want to go through with you sort of the key changes that I had to perform to make this work moving from V3 to V4. So in your local WordPress installation, right, just go into WP Content and then Plugins. And I'm just going to move over my block, uh, my new block type plugin, and then go ahead and open up that new folder in VS Code. Let's open up our terminal. Be sure to run an npm install. As soon as that finishes, then run npm start. And that's just gonna run in the background until you tell it to stop. Uh, but let's go activate our plugin now. So in the admin dashboard, under plugins, here it is, Brad's boilerplate block plugin, just activate it. Now let's go use it in a blog post. So like if I go into my hello world post, and maybe below this paragraph, if I search for, you know, forward slash, what is it? Block tailwind react. We'll see in just a moment how we can make these inputs have a white background, for example, but let's just say sky color is bluish and grass color is pretty green. Go ahead and save that. So this is what it looks like on the admin side. And then if you view the actual public front end, it looks like this. You can toggle these. Beautiful. And now let's go prove that the tailwind is up and running. So first, let's try to adjust the public front end. So in SRC, you would just go into frontend.js. And for example, like BG Amber, instead of 100, you could change that to like what? BG Indigo 100. If I save that and refresh the front end, you get the idea. So Tailwind is up and running. And then let's practice editing uh, the admin side. Uh, so you, for that, you would just go into the SRC folder and then index.js. Let's find those inputs. So for example, like on input line number 22, you could just say like what, bg-white, and you could use that for this one as well, bg-white, hit save, refresh, you get the idea. I've gone ahead and set things up so that the classes, the Tailwind classes that are being included are sort of scoped to only this wrapper div. So even if this paragraph tried to use one of your classes like uh, BG blue or you know like a font size or anything, it won't actually work. And I did this so that you're free to use this even on projects where the entire site isn't using Tailwind. And this is accomplished by just, if you dig into style.css, down around line number five, you can see I have, you know, my unique plugin wrapper class. And then inside of that, that's where I'm actually importing, right? Like our base and our utilities. Now you might be missing uh, a few Tailwind features that target like the body or HTML root. Uh, but by and large, this is going to get you all of the basics up and running in this really cool way that is scoped so that it's not affecting any other utility classes on your otherwise, you know, perhaps website that isn't completely Tailwind. Cool, so that's an example of creating a block type. I won't walk through it with you right now, but in my repo, there's also a plugin called Interactivity Block Tailwind, which is very similar, only it's using WordPress's Interactivity API instead of React for the public front end of your block. From this point forward though, I want to look at a theme. So what if you wanted to create a classic WordPress theme and you did want to use Tailwind throughout the entire front end of your website? Well, I have this folder called Brad's Boilerplate Theme Tailwind and let's go give it a spin. So here's that folder on my desktop. You can download this from my GitHub repo, Brad's Boilerplate Theme Tailwind. And I'm just going to move this into a specific location in my installation, right? So in WP Content, go into Themes, and then I'm just gonna move this folder over and then open up this folder, uh, the new theme folder in VS Code. Open up your terminal and be sure to run an npm install. Once that finishes, just run npm start. Cool, and now let's go activate this theme. 
So in the dashboard under appearance, this one, Brad's boilerplate theme tailwind, we'll just activate that. Now let's go refresh our website, cool. Now if you go to the home page, like if you click the link in your header, here's a React component, and this has nothing to do with tailwind, uh, but if you use my boilerplate, I wanna explain a really important detail to you. A few months ago when WordPress released a new version, there's a key crucial change that you need to include uh, if you're wanting your front end public React to work properly. So I was running into this error and I was Googling a lot and I couldn't find a solution. I eventually, in a GitHub issue, found the solution. So I wanna make sure to bring this to your attention. In this themes functions.php file, when you're loading your front end JavaScript, your React, we've known for a long time that wp-element is sort of WordPress's named or version of React. So we're used to including that, but now you need to include this as well, React JSX runtime as a dependency for your script. So hopefully that saves you some time and some frustration. Now, something that's also worth pointing out in your package.json, if you're using a version of WordPress scripts that is version 27 or older, you don't need to worry about that. You don't need to include React JSX runtime. But if you're using a new enough version of WordPress scripts that is version 28 or newer, you're absolutely, and you're not just creating like a block, you're actually trying to use React, real React on your front end, you do need to include this React JSX runtime. Cool. Uh, but yeah, let's test out this theme. So let's see. Uh, let's try to use Tailwind classes in our React component here. So for example, like in SRC scripts, we have what? Example React component. Maybe instead of from blue 500, what if we say like from orange 500? Save, refresh, you get the idea. And what's really cool, if you click onto your blog post, you can see you're gonna have some baseline styling for like heading level one, bulleted lists, and so on and so forth. So I'm using Tailwind's typography plugin. And from this point forward, there's really not much to say other than I wanna show you the key differences from moving from V3 to V4. So you'll notice that we no longer need any sort of Tailwind configuration file. We don't need to spell out where our templates, like where our HTML uh, or where our JavaScript files live. We don't need to spell out anything. The new version of Tailwind can just sort of find all of that for us. And another area where we don't need configuration is using a Tailwind plugin. So I'm using the typography plugin for basic, like, like unordered lists and headings. So normally in the olden days, you had to spell that out in a configuration file. But now if you just go into our index.css, it's as simple as I'm importing Tailwind and then I'm using this app plugin directive. That's it. So there's really no configuration file. We don't have to spell out where the templates are. I mean, it doesn't get much easier than this. So we saw that I made an example change in my JavaScript or my React. Now let's try making a change like what in header.php, like instead of BG gray 300, what if I say like BG indigo 300, I save, I refresh the header gets updated. You get the idea. So to recap what was actually different, if we jump back to my plugin block, uh, this is a new way of having your classes scoped to only, you know, live within your wrapper class. You might not want to use this approach. I find this really useful for something like a block because just because someone uses my block, they might not want these utility classes available globally on their website. Uh, but this syntax is new for version four, right? And then in our, let me jump back to our theme, uh, this syntax of using a plugin, a Tailwind plugin, that's also new. But that's really about it. You're just eliminating a configuration file and you're using the newest versions in your package.json. That is gonna bring this video to a close. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna help support this YouTube channel, the best way is to visit my website, learnwebcode.com. I have several different feature length premium courses available. You can click on curriculum to check all of the different courses I teach. So as of today, that is a front end bootcamp, Laravel, MySQL, React, WordPress development, and JavaScript, both client side and node on the server side. My course bundle also comes with an exclusive Discord chat community. Another great way to help support my YouTube channel from learnwebcode.com. If you scroll down to the bottom, you can click on hosting. And you'll see that for the last 19 years, I've used DreamHost for all of my WordPress projects. If you use my affiliate link to DreamHost, so here or what down here, I will receive compensation for sending new users their way. That's a great way to support my YouTube channel. That's about it. Thank you so much for watching until the very, very end here. I hope you feel like you learned something and stay tuned for the next video.